What is going on guys welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to be taking a look at the top four star characters that in my opinion everybody should have already built this is especially true for free to play players and low spenders if you are a player like me that gets one copy of almost every character then you may get away with not building one of one or more of these characters but for the most part everybody should have at least some of some of these characters already built in their account everybody knows that Fei Zhao comes out in just a few days and if you are in the market of getting stellar jades or topping up make sure to check our friends over at lubar.gg the link in the description is going to take you to lubar.gg as you can see they have Genshin Impact Honkai Saro and Zalazon Zero currently they have a 14% savings on Honkai Saro so you're going to click that I'm going to buy the $42 uh, dollar pack this pack is about $49.99 and in lubar.gg they have it at $42.99 what you're going to want to do is go ahead and go into your menu make sure that you have your UID you can go right here and copy your UID make sure this information is 100% correct and you're going to make sure that it matches what you put in here so make sure that matches select your server in my case it's going to be America and click top up now continue to purchase obviously I'm going to blur out my payment information but after this you verify all this make sure your information is correct click pay now it's going to take a few minutes so we're going to go in game and see how long it's going to take for us to receive our currency let's just go right here and let's oh we already got it right here 3080 right there we already got it it didn't even take 30 seconds now i can summon for my sparkle light cone check our friends over at lubar.gg link in the description below the first character we're going to talk about is asta she is one of the very first characters we get when we start playing the game and we really don't see her value initially but as we get more experience in the game and as we get more knowledge of how the game works and the importance of speed and speed tuning then Asta's value starts to skyrocket. A fully stacked Asta can increase your team's attack by 70% and speed by 50 just straight 50 speed to your team with a really decent uptime especially if you have her on E6. Her value increases even further especially if your main damage dealer is a fire type unit which right now we don't really have a full-on crit DPS fire type damage so the only thing we have is Topaz maybe Hook but even characters like Firefly that cannot take full advantage of her fire damage bonus, she can still benefit from the 70% attack and the 50 speed because that is one of the one of the stats that Firefly needs most is definitely speed. So 50 speed, 70% attack for Firefly is still really, really strong for her. So even on break teams, Asta has insane value. So even in the future, when we get inevitably a better fire crit DPS or a character that can take advantage of fire damage bonuses, attack, and speed, Asta will be there to support that character when it inevitably drops. So don't be surprised if you see Asta in a lot of showcases whenever we get a really hyped fire damage dealer. Lastly, Asta is probably one of the better dot characters we have in the game when it comes to supporting, as well as that she has her own dot debuff on her basic. She can actually inflict burn on her basic attack, which is pretty much what you're going to be using. You're only going to be using your skill maybe once if you have her on E6. Uh, you may use it every couple turns if you have her less than e6 but she can inflict burn dot with her basic attack which means dot teams are insanely uh benef benefited from having us on the team did you get the 50 speed the 70 attack everybody knows that dots scale off attack so asta is is an insanely invaluable unit even for dot teams as well she also gets her ultimate extremely fast so if you run her on dance 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 having her ultimate up every other turn is going to be insane she kind of acts kind of like a pseudo robin branya sparkle type of character because she she will be action advancing your team very very often as far as asta goes on this list she is pretty much the most replaceable on here she is less less of a must build than the rest of the cast just because the harmony characters we have aside from asta are insanely broken like their <laughs> harmony characters are the most broken characters in the game uh you can if you have hanya already built or ruan may or robin or sparkle any combination of those you should i mean you can invest in, in asta my asta currently is level 60 i don't have her invested pretty much not at all and she still functions every time i use her in pure fiction especially in pure fiction she's insane in pure fiction when i use her in pure fiction or even sometimes i use her in moc she performs extremely well just got to make sure she doesn't die uh, at least mine because mine's level 60 and she works extremely well so at number four we have march 7th and this does include the new hunt march 7th and the preservation march 7th they're both very useful but we're going to talk about the hunt variant which we unlock later on in the game it's a completely free to play character that you get e6 coming in this patch of 2.5 so it's a it's it's a fully e6 out four star that we get for free which is insanely strong 
Like, I'm not even saying it because she's free. She is insanely strong. She can dish out really, really good damage. She's a hybrid type of character in which she's kind of like Topaz in the sense that she deals damage and she also buffs uh, one of the teammates' damage. So she's kind of like a pseudo harmony. She gives them 60% crit damage and 36% break effect, as well as some speed to whoever is the Shifu, which is insane. Um, these buffs are invaluable and very essential to characters like Boot Hill or Zhui Yi that benefit from both crit stats and break effect as well as speed. However, her best application is going to be in a follow-up oriented team and follow-up teams are extremely popular. People love playing those type of teams, especially with the release of Fei Zhao and Moza that are coming now in this patch. Hunt Mark Shevin is going to get a boost in usage for sure because she's one of Fei Zhao's best partners, bar none. She buffs her crit damage, she buffs her break effect, even though Fei Zhao doesn't really do too much with break effect. She also buffs her speed. She gives her follow-up attacks. It, it's just insane. The synergy they share is so strong, which, I don't know, makes March 7th, uh, the Hunt variant, a very, very strong character to have built up in your account. I'm not even a follow-up attack player, and I have my Hunt March uh, built up because I use her with Yun Lee. You can use her with Jade as well, which I have Jade, and I like Jade. So uh, Hunt March is very, very strong. She also has some use in Super Break teams as well. She, has, she deals a lot of break damage, especially if you build her that way with break effects and you stack Ruan Mei, Harmony MC. She deals some good damage there as well. Like I said, this is a completely free-to-play character that we get maxed out E6, uh, from just playing the story or playing the events. So there's really no reason to not have March 7th built up, especially if you uh, like the follow-up attack meta. Now, as far as the ice preservation a variant of March 7th, she's also a very useful character for simulated universe. Also, she's a very good character for bosses like Adventurine that are weak to ice and that need to be interrupted for your team not to get mollywopped. Since Ice March 7th ultimate has really good freezing capabilities, you can use that ultimate to interrupt Adventurine's attack pattern and yeah, make him skip a turn uh, if you use it correctly. Also in Simulated Universe with the Remembrance Path, she deals a lot of damage. She can enable a lot of damage with the Remembrance and Dissociation setup that is very popular in Simulated Universe. So she can be used kind of like a, like a simulated universe cheese if you set up the team that way so preservation march 7th is not a top tier sustain by any means but she has definite really really strong uses that you need to be taken advantage of now breaking into the top three no pun intended we have our boy gallagher he is insanely insanely strong for a healer and also as she, he can double as a sub dps in his main team which is the super break team he has a fixed amount of healing, which in his case is way better than just having scaled healing because when you have fixed healing that is buffed by a scalable break effect stat, I think it's way better than just having a straight up scalable break effect stat, if that makes any sense. His skill is also a cleansing skill, which is good in an emergency. And aside from those um, aforementioned emergencies, you really don't have to use a skill at all because he kind of heals passively by his basic attack and ultimate combination into enhanced basic attack combination. And he is very, very good and efficient at healing. He enables passive healing for the entire team when they attack. He's kind of like a pseudo Luocha in that sense. Um, because he has a 100% action advance on his ultimate, he can double as a sustain for uh, adventuring and phage out teams because he takes a lot of turns, especially if you run him with the multiplication light cone, which action advances him every time he uses his basic. And on top of all that, because his main stat is is break effect he doubles as a dps because his basic attack obviously is a basic attack and hits his uh, ultimate is an aoe hit with really really nice toughness damage and his enhanced basic attack has insanely high toughness damage as well so in a super break team setup he deals a lot of damage in a lot of cases dealing over 200k when we have a few enemies that are broken or in the broken state. If that wasn't enough, his ultimate also inflicts a debuff, which increases break damage by about 12 to 15% depending on Eidolons, which is just a straight 12 and 15% damage increase depending on your investment on your Gallagher. Currently, Gallagher is a sustainer's choice in the super break teams when it involves Firefly and or Boot Hill. And he is so strong in that role that not even a five-star Lingxia character that will release after Fei Zhao. It, 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 the competition is so close that if you just get Lynch's Light Cone and put it on Gallagher, you have a very, very small difference between using Lynchia and using Gallagher. Obviously, Lynchia has her own uses aside from what Gallagher is doing because she does follow up attacks. But in a break or super break team, Gallagher and Lynchia are pretty much neck and neck uh, when they both have Lynch's Light Cone. Aside from supporting Firefly, which is the best super break character in the game, aside from being the best sustain for a Firefly super break team, he can also double or su substitute Adventurine 
in the Acheron teams because he does inflict a debuff, even though Acheron can't really take advantage of that debuff fully. He, uh, she can still take advantage of the debuff implantation, which is an extra stack, which could be the difference between ulting and not ulting. Uh, everybody should have at least one Gallagher for free, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure he was given out for free uh, at least one copy. So if you have it, just build him up. You, for his healing and sustaining capabilities, you don't really need him with uh, maxed out Eidolons. His cleansing, I think, is tied to his E2. But aside from that, you have a really, really good healer and a sub damage dealer with well, when you play him in a super break competition. So do yourselves a favor. If you have Gallagher not build up, just go ahead and start building him up. Uh, slowly he will be invaluable i promise you that all right number two we have ting yun in my opinion she should have been a five star character she has a five star caliber kit no other character in the game can funnel energy into one character as well as she does who gives 20 percent energy to everybody but ting yun gives 60 energy straight up to anyone and this 60 energy is just insane at e6 at less than e6 is 50 but it's still even at 50 energy it's still a lot of energy so characters that rely on their ultimate like for instance uh dan hang bibi rune argenti yun lee even zhui yi benefits greatly from uh having ting yun she also gives you a sizable 50 percent damage bonus and a very good attack bonus depending on how much attack your ting yun has not only that she's probably the best user for the light cone dance 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 which is arguably one of the best light cones in the game and is a four star light cone because her technique allows her to start the battle with her ultimate filled up you can use dance 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 pretty much frame zero and you pretty much take advantage of every single action advance so you have max effectiveness on your action advance because you do it as soon as the match starts which no other character in the game can do that no other character can ult frame zero when the battle starts because of that her first turns energy gain is not wasted in the slightest which means the second ultimate is going to come even faster than normal and she's going to be able to action advance one more time she can do this about two to three times per cycle depending on how you play her and this results in an, in a lot of extra actions by your team this could be the difference between you clearing in the 10 cycles or not or getting the, the zero cycle and not getting the zero cycle the only reason Tingyun is not the number one character in this list is because the best character in the game doesn't use energy and that it's Akron she doesn't care about energy and then also phase out which is one of the more hyped and very strong character that's going to release also doesn't use energy but rest assured no newer characters are going to come that utilize energy and Ting Yun is going to be right there waiting to buff them up and she's going to be probably best in slot for a lot of characters coming in the future so yeah she her value is only going to go up so just invest in your Ting Yun now because later on if you leave it for later she it might be harder for you to invest in a character when you have other characters that are coming out that you want to invest in like i said she is best in slot for some of the best uh energy based dps in the game like don hong baby lune argenti yun li you have jing yuan you have clara you have a uh, jue yi as well like a lot of these characters need their ultimates to function clearly and uh ting yun is right there being hey like hey i'm just gonna enable your whole kit for you so yeah investing your ting yun you will definitely not regret this okay and the number one character and it may not come as, as, as a price to pretty much anybody i think it's pella currently in this in this meta currently pella is the number one four star character in the game uh she's a day one character that just was completely overlooked when the game started but because nobody under really understood what defense shred and defense reduction really was uh as it got more popular and as it got out that defense shred and defense ignore are very very strong Pella's value started increasing and it hasn't dropped ever since. She is one of the most SP positive characters unless you're running her on an ice team. You don't really have to touch her skill for pretty much anything. And then she enables you to acquire 56% defense shred uh, on the enemy on every enemy on the field. Um, this is only a this is only doable if you have at least one copy of Resolution Shines of Pearls of Sweat Light Cone, which is an old Light Cone, so most people should have at least one copy. You don't really need the S5, although it really helps. At S1, it's 52% uh, defense sh uh, shred instead of 56, which, you know, it's, 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 it's a good difference, I guess. But even at 40% defense shred, that's still an insane... Uh, uh, that's still a really strong amount of defense shred. And if you saw my defense shred, defense reduction versus vulnerability video, you understand that 56% defense shred is pretty much equal to about increasing your overall damage by about 43%, which is an insane amount of damage increase, insane amount of damage multiplier increase. Um, it is true that Pella just got a little bit of a power creep with the release of Zhao Xiao. However, they operate in different areas of the damage formula, so none of them are stepping in each other's toes. So in, in some cases, Pella will be better to use than Zhao Xiao 
especially if you already have some other sources of defense shred already on the team, Pella will probably end up being better than Zhao Xiao in those scenarios. Nonetheless, she is the most reliable source of defense shred or defense ignore that we have in the game. And that is why she is number one. She's also SP positive. So she's always going to contribute SP to your team. She gets her ult really fast. It's just a lot of value that you get from running a Pella on your team. And that is the reason she is the number one character currently. But I mean, Ting Yun and Pella pretty much are interchangeable. Like I wouldn't, it's really not a discussion whether Ting Yun is better than Pella or Pella better than Ting Yun. I think both of them are pretty equal in that sense. But uh, as long as Pella and Ting Yun are either one and two, uh, it's okay. It's fine with me. I just chose the ones that were a little bit more accessible. But these are the honorable mentions. We have Herda or Cheval. Herda is an invaluable character for Pure Fiction. If you are struggling with Pure Fiction and you have a Herda and a Himeko on your team or on your roster, you pretty much you should just build both because they're guaranteeing you to get at least 30k in one of the sides. Every time since Pure Fiction released, at least one side has been weak to either Fire or Ice. And then if you run Herda Himeko on that side, then you're just going to have a 30k just for free. So that's pretty much half the battle already won, especially in Pure Fiction. Herda in particular, uh, she's very, very strong also in Simulia Universe if you run her with the Remembrance Pass or even with the Elation Path with the follow-up attacking and stuff. She's also very, very strong with Himeko as well. So she's a really good investment. We actually get a bunch of her copies for free uh, just by playing the game. So you get a bunch of Eidolons for free and then she becomes really, really strong. She doesn't need to hit for a billion damage to be very, very useful, which is really good for uh, Herda. Survolve kind of serves the same purpose. She is a AOE oriented, uh, ult oriented copper character. So the more ults you can fire off, the better she's going to be, especially in Pure Fiction. Survolve specifically just Pure Fiction, not really uh, simulate universe that much, but in Pure Fiction, Survolve serves pretty much the same purpose as Herda. If the side is lightning weak, you are pretty much going to get a 30K guaranteed on that if you have a proper Survolve team set up. And that shouldn't be too hard to do because she's just a regular crit DPS character. Second honorable mention is going to be Hanya. She is pretty much in the, in the Asta uh, slot. We talked about briefly, I mentioned Hanya earlier on. Uh, she's pretty much the same role as Asta. The only thing is that she she's a bit more universal because she does she just gives you a, a damage amplification, not a fire damage amplification. So you can use her in more teams. She also gives you skill points. So, but I only I only would recommend building Hanya if you have her E6 instead of your Asta. So if your if your Asta is not E6 but your Hanya is, then I would recommend building Hanya instead of Asta. Otherwise, just build Asta. Third honorable mention is going to be Luca. He is pretty much a budget boot hill with the release of Super Break Luca. And all the physical characters really got a really uh, got a significant buff because Super Break, because because physical Super Break is insanely strong. We've all seen what Boot Hill can do, and Luca is kind of like a budget, a uh, lot weaker version of Boot Hill. But he still puts out really, like, really decent damage. I don't really have footage of him. I don't have him built because I have my Boot Hill. But Luca can serve. Uh, Luca can help you clear characters like. For instance, a Venturine who's weak to physical, he's a single target monster or a single target boss that you can target. And uh, once you break him, he probably will never take another turn again because he will just die while he's broken, especially if you have Ruan Mei and Harmony Trailblazer on the team. Uh, another character is Misha, and Misha is probably the most overlooked character in the game. And the reason is because when Misha released, Jing Liu was like the like best DPS in the game, even though I don't think she ever was, but that's besides the point. Um, everybody ignored Misha because Ice Destruction character, we already have Jing Liu, but Misha has a lot of uses. Misha is also a debuffer in the sense that he can interrupt uh, characters whenever they take double turns. You can ult and then his since, since his ult is very likely to uh, freeze the enemy, you can use him as a kind of like a pseudo sustainer to interrupt them. It also deals about 200k damage if you have him set up correctly with a fully stacked ult, which is an insane amount of damage coming from a four-star character that pretty much everybody writes off as mid. Not as mid, people write him off as bad. And uh, I just think that people that haven't used Misha or haven't seen people use Misha are just gonna think he's bad because he just, you know, he just doesn't look interesting and doesn't like play interestingly but he can dish out a quite significant amount of damage. So don't sleep on your boy Misha if you need an ice DPS and you have Misha, especially if you have Eidolons on him, go ahead and build him up. He's really, really strong. The last honorable mention is going to be Moza. We haven't gotten Moza yet, but he will be released with Fei Zhao in a few days. And he's a very, very strong character because he's essentially a budget Topaz. If you don't have Topaz and Numbi and you like the follow-up attack team meta, Moza is a really, really good replacement. So all you have to do is either pull for Topaz's Lycone and you don't have to pick up you don't have to pull for Topaz anymore. 
Obviously, Topaz is slightly better in most scenarios, but Moza is not that far behind. He deals insane amount of damage. He can hit for, like, between his ultimate skill and follow-up, he can he can slot for about 220k when you add everything up together. He also offers debuffs for, for characters like Dr. Ratio. He's insanely strong for characters like Dr. Ratio as well. So if you're pulling for Feijiao and you end up pulling Moza, don't hesitate to build him up. He's insanely, insanely strong. All right, so that's going to be the end of this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.